Hello everybody and welcome to week 9 of the English Conversation class. Um, today's topic is going to be food um, and let's get started. Um, now, just before we start, um, at this point I do not know when in-class lectures are going to start. I have been told week 10, but I am really not sure um, when they are going to start. So as soon as I know, I will send a message out to everyone um, telling them when our in-class lectures will start. Um, secondly, we have an online makeup class. So instead of the um, scheduled makeup class on a Saturday, there will now be an online um, makeup class. So this class is available on the e-learning website now. Please check. The um, makeup class is also related to today's subject of food. It just goes into a different part of it and how to describe um, food. Um, and it's going to be talking about some foods from around the world. Um, everyone, please check your files before you upload them to the e-learning website. Make sure everything is correct. Again, today there will be some points in the video where you have to pause um, and do the assignments. There's going to be um, some listening and some video today, so there's another good chance maybe um, you can rewind if you don't hear everything clearly. Your class materials today, you need your textbook and you need the handout containing today's class assignments and today's lecture presentation. The class assignment worksheet looks like this. There are three parts today and the PDF file looks like this. So please download these um, before we um, start the lesson. So um, the, the lesson today is about food and we're going to look at some common types of food. Um, we're looking at five different types. Um, we're going to be describing our favorite meal of the day. We'll have some conversation questions where we have to write some answers and give extra information again. And at the end of today, we're going to watch um, a short cooking video. And in the cooking video, it's going to use a lot of the vocabulary that we have um, learned today. So that will be quite useful. Um, so let's start by thinking about different types of food. So on page 66 of your textbook, it shows us five categories of food, five kind of different types. Now we have dairy vegetables, fruit, grains, and meat and protein. So within each of these categories, we have different types of food. So we're going to look at this and we're going to try and match the foods here to their categories. So we'll start with A. We've got apples. So first of all, let's find apples and we can go to number seven. And here we've got a nice green and red apple and apples are fruit. B, we have got bananas and bananas match up with number six. And again, bananas are a fruit. C, we have beans, and beans are over here. There's lots of different types of beans, number 16, but they're usually called um, a protein um, here, beans. And I think if you eat tofu or any baked beans, 
Um, oh, there's lots of different types there, but they are a protein. We've then got beef, and if we go down, number 14, beef is a meat. We've then got some carrots. Oh, where are the carrots? Here we are, number 14, carrots are a vegetable. We've got cereal, which we probably eat for breakfast. We can see down here, number eight. And cereal is a grain. So grains are usually things that are made from um, types of plants like um, wheat or barley, uh, maize. And usually we don't just eat the grain. Well, some grains we do eat. But usually we make them into flour and we can make bread or we can make pasta. We can make other things like cereal with those grains. We already had cheese down here, number one. And cheese is a dairy product. And dairy is simply products that come from the milk of animals. Usually cow, but sometimes from sheep or from goats or from other animals. But dairy products come from milk, so cheese. We've then got chicken, and chicken's down here, number 15. Chicken is a meat. We've got eggs here, and eggs are number 12. Eggs are a type of protein. We've got fish. Next, J is fish, down here, and it looks like a nice mackerel, lovely tasting fish. So number 13 is fish, and again, that some people would say is a meat, some people say protein. K, we've got milk, number 2, and again, it comes from um, the animal, it's a dairy product. We have noodles number 10 and again noodles are usually made from flour so the flour comes from the wheat grain it's a grain pasta down here and that type is farfalle lovely type of pasta number nine and again it is made from a grain it usually comes from wheat flour um, so it's a grain N, we have potatoes, number five, and potatoes are a vegetable. We've got O, rice, and again, rice is a type of grain. So rice is a little bit different to the other grains because we we just eat the rice when it comes off of the, the plant. The other grains we kind of crush into flour and make something else. And then P, we've got tomatoes, and that's number three. And here they say tomatoes are vegetables. I don't agree with that. I think tomatoes are fruit. But anyway, some people will say tomatoes are vegetables. Some people say they're fruit. It's not so important. So here are some very, very common types of food and very useful to know um, this vocabulary. A lot of this food is going to be used later today in um, our recipe at the end. So there is our first part, types of food and the five categories. Dairy, vegetables, fruit, grains, meat and protein. So that's going to be the first part of the assignment today. Um, I've given you lots of examples here of each type. So you're going to try and think of three different foods for each category. Now please don't just use these foods. No, don't use these. Think of different food for each category. So I've given you an example for dairy. Yogurt. Yogurt is made with milk. Cream, made with milk. Ice cream is made with milk. Butter, made from milk. So these are four different um, dairy products. So you're going to do the same for vegetables, fruit, grains, and meat and protein. Try to think of three vegetables, three types of fruit, 
three grains and three types of meat or protein. So now is a good time to pause the video and complete that part of the assignment. OK, we'll go on to the next part, which is about your favourite meal. So we're going to be talking about um, different meals of the day. So a lot of people will eat three meals a day. They will have breakfast in the morning, um, lunch around midday or early afternoon, one o'clock maybe, and then you'll have dinner. And dinner is usually in the evening, maybe six or seven o'clock. Now, for me, I don't actually eat three meals a day. Um, I very, very rarely eat breakfast. So maybe only once every two weeks, maybe. But I usually eat lunch and, and dinner. Now, we're going to just listen to some people and they're talking about their favourite meal of the day. So we'll go and we'll listen and then we'll look at what they say in some more detail. Page 66. Exercise 2. Language in Context. Favourite Meals. I love breakfast. I usually eat some cereal, but I don't have any milk with it. I also eat an apple. My favorite meal is lunch. I don't have a lot of time, so I often just get some noodles. My favorite meal of the day is dinner. A typical dinner for me is rice and beans with some beef. OK, so let's look at what they said in a little bit more detail. So the first woman said, I love breakfast. So she's talking, that's her favourite meal. And then she goes on to describe what she eats for breakfast. So I usually eat some cereal, but I don't have any milk with it. I also eat an apple. So she's told us her favourite meal and what she eats. The second man said, my favourite meal is lunch. I don't have a lot of time, so I often just get some noodles. So here he's told us his favourite meal, told us what he eats and why he eats it. And the third man, he said, my favourite meal of the day is dinner. A typical dinner for me is some, is some rice and beans with some beef. So again, he's told us his favourite meal and what he eats for that meal. So these are three good examples of um, which meal they think is the best. So you are going to do the same. So in your class assignment worksheet, you should write about your favourite meal of the day, just like these people did choose either breakfast, lunch or dinner and then try to explain um, maybe what you eat or why you eat um, that thing. So um, this is a good time to pause the video and write about your favourite meal in your class assignment worksheet. OK, so one of the um, meals was breakfast. So I think we can take a little bit of break and watch a short video. And in this short video, you're going to see about different kinds of breakfasts around the world. So a lot of different countries have different things. Um, in the UK, people usually eat some meat and eggs. In Korea, people would maybe have some rice, um, some soup, or maybe some toast or cereal as well. So each country's a little bit different. So let's watch the video. No matter where you're waking up around the world, a hearty breakfast is the best way to start the day. From elaborate spreads to sweet and savory bites, 
Here's what breakfast looks like around the world. Breakfast in Morocco is all about simplicity, such as bread and egg dishes. For those with a sweet tooth, sponge is a popular donut-style treat. It is eaten plain or soaked in honey. Moroccan breakfast also doubles as tea time. Shakshuka is a common breakfast dish eaten throughout the Mediterranean and the Middle East. The dish is made of eggs poached, baked, or scrambled in a savory tomato-based sauce, thought to have originated in Tunisia, then spread to Israel and the surrounding region by Jewish immigrants. In England, a full English breakfast means little room left on your plate. Sometimes referred to as a fry-up, the plate features a sunny side-up fried egg, sausage, fried bread, bacon, beans, and tomatoes, paired with a side of hot tea. Some locals might even add on mushrooms, black pudding, and potatoes for the ultimate English breakfast. A traditional Japanese breakfast includes an array of savory bites. It often consists of miso soup, fish, and steamed rice, usually served with egg. Natto, fermented soybeans mixed with soy sauce and mustard, is also eaten in the breakfast set. A Filipino breakfast starts with sour, sweet, and savory flavors of tapsi log. Thin slices of beef tapa are served with a fried egg and garlic fried rice. The beef is often marinated in soy sauce, calamansi juice, vinegar, sugar, and garlic. While meals vary across the country, breakfast in the United States tends to include a few regular go-tos. Americans enjoy chowing down on eggs, bacon, sausage, and starchy sides like toast or pancakes. The South Asian dish halwa puri is beloved by people in both India and Pakistan. Puri, which is made out of wheat flour, is served deep fried with chana masala, a spicy chickpea curry, potato and sweet milk, and semolina-based confection called halva. In Myanmar, sip on savory mohinga soup. This Burmese favorite is a rice noodle and fish soup with lemongrass, garlic, and catfish. It is considered to be the national dish of Myanmar. Breakfast in Turkey is an elaborate spread known as kavalta, which is a Turkish word for breakfast. It consists of fresh cheeses like feta and kashkaval, black and green olives, fresh baked white bread, fruit preserves, honey, sweet butter, and plenty of brewed black tea served in Turkish tea glasses. Columbia changwa is a hearty soup made of milk, water, scallions, and eggs. This soup is garnished with cilantro and topped with a piece of stale bread called kalado, which softens in the changwa. In Bulgaria, banitsa is a traditional flaky pastry eaten for breakfast. It is prepared by layering a mixture of whisked eggs and pieces of cheese between phyllo pastry and then baked in an oven. It can be eaten hot or cold. Bake and saltfish is a classic breakfast dish in Guyana. It consists of boiled salted codfish sauteed with tomatoes, onions, garlic, and pepper. It is served with bake, a bread that is slightly sweet. Breakfast in Mexico is not to be missed. Chilaquiles is made up of fried corn tortillas soaked in red or green salsa and topped with crema, cheese, and onions. Mangu is a popular dish served for breakfast in the Dominican Republic. It is made up of boiled plantains that are mashed with butter and served with fried eggs, Dominican salami, and pickled onions. Masuni is a traditional breakfast dish in the Maldives. Tuna is combined with minced chilies, finely chopped onions, and freshly grated coconut. It is eaten with roshi flatbread. Well, what did you think of those different types of breakfasts um, from around the world? Um, I don't know about you, but that's made me feel hungry. So um, I think it's always interesting to see about um, different kinds of food um, from other countries. Um, in the uh, makeup lesson about describing food, we're going to look at that in some more detail. So this video could be quite useful for that. Um, also, maybe you've got some ideas um, for your questions today. So. We are going to be doing four questions, um, all about food, 
and we're going to be writing our answers in our assignment worksheet. Again this week we're going to try to write two pieces of extra information for each question. So our questions today, what's your favorite food? What kind of food do you dislike? Do you like spicy food? And what's the best restaurant you've been to? So I've given my example answers. So for question one, my favorite food is lamb. I like to barbecue it. I eat lamb once or twice a month. So I've answered the question and my two extra information, how do I cook it and how often do I eat it? So there we go. Um, question two, what food do you dislike? Well, I dislike mango. I think it's too sweet, but my son really likes mango. So again, my answer, why I like it, and then somebody else that actually does like mango. Do you like spicy food? Yes, I do. My favorite spicy food is curry. I think fire chicken is too spicy. Now, fire chicken, I think you all know as bulldog. I just think it's too spicy. I can't taste anything except the chili. So, I do like spicy food, and I've my first piece of extra information, my favorite spicy food, and then second one, a spicy food that I don't like. Um, question four, what's the best restaurant I've been to? So the best restaurant I've been to is called Alchemia. It is in Glasgow in the UK. It serves different types of Mediterranean food. So I've told you the name, my extra information one was where is it and second extra information what kind of food now Mediterranean food it comes from kind of southern Europe around that big sea called the Mediterranean so any kind of food from maybe Spain Italy Greece even Lebanon um, Egypt we would call a uh, Mediterranean food so there's some good example answers. I hope your answers are very much like um, mine. So try and write down your answers in your assignment worksheet. So now is a good time to pause the video. Now, the last thing we are going to do today is watch a short video on how to cook a simple dish. Now, this dish is um, a bolognese ragu, um, and this is what people usually would serve with spaghetti or any other types of pasta. Um, now, before we watch the video, let's look at the ingredients. A lot of this um, we already talked about in our vocabulary part today. So the things that he's going to use are garlic, onion, celery, and celery is like a long green stick vegetable and you'll see that in the video. Carrots and rosemary. Rosemary is a type of herb and again you'll see that at the beginning of the video. Red wine bacon, some beef, parmesan cheese, there'll be some olive oil, and two types of tomato. Tomato puree is a type of paste, and plum tomatoes, those are the types of tomatoes you can usually buy in tins. So, this recipe I think is really useful because it shows you how you can put these different types of ingredients together to make a delicious um, dish and maybe you can cook this for your family or friends or whatever. Um, now the person we're going to watch is a very famous um, chef from the UK. His name is Jamie Oliver 
and yeah he tries to make cooking simple for everyone so he's going to make the ragu all you would need to do is add some pasta and you have a delicious meal so let's watch the video Hello you lovely people, uh, Jamie here. So we're gonna do an incredible, classic, family friendly, beautiful ragu. Perfect as a base for loads of great dishes like spaghetti bolognese, lasagna, chili and cannelloni. It's economical, filling, dead easy to knock up in a big batch and store in the freezer for a rainy day. Plus, it's a great way to sneak extra veg into your kids at meal times. There's loads more great recipes like this over on Family Food Tube right now. Please go and check out our channel after this video. Right, let's get cracking. We're gonna get ourselves some rosemary, two nice big sprigs. Grab the stalk and pull it off. Chop that up. And then next to it, I've got some lovely smoked bacon. 100 grams. I'm just slicing this bacon up. If you are a parent of a baby that's weaning, you wouldn't use the bacon because it's got salt in it. We'll put a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil in a pan. Let's whack it onto full whack. Go in with the rosemary and the smoky bacon. So that's the beginning of our story. I've got one kilo of minced beef and one kilo of minced pork. In it goes. And we'll just break that up. If budget is a real issue, what you can use is half as much minced meat, no problem at all, and maybe go in with a sort of similar amount of lentils. And honestly, Sometimes, if you get the method that like I'm gonna teach you right, it's really hard to tell the difference. Can you see how the water is coming out of the meat? That's fine. We'll keep stirring it for about 10 minutes until it starts to fry again, until we get lovely, lightly golden mincemeat. Listen, guys, can you hear that? That's a good sound. If it's sticking, if it's sizzling, that means flavor. And of course, if you say that a couple of minutes later, that means burnt, so don't burn it. Keep your eyes peeled. So look, that's now browning off beautiful. I'm gonna rattle up a load of my veg in here. It's easy, it's quick, and is very uniform. So we're gonna use two onions, four carrots, and zip it up. Cut that up to the same size as the mincemeat. Go in with the onions, do exactly the same. You could add other things in. A little bit of squash, zucchini or courgettes is really, really good. Four sticks of celery. Lovely colours. Stir all these veggies in, intense flavours. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous. So look, I'm going to stir that every minute for the next 10 minutes and then I'll add all the wet stuff. So, have a look at that. This has been cooking... Come here. This has been cooking now for about uh, 20 minutes in total, okay? So we've really developed flavour. Go in with two heaped tablespoons of tomato puree. This is just going to give it a lovely depth. And then we're going to go in with four lovely tins of plum tomatoes. Now, another little tip if you want the best, sweetest, most perfect tomatoes, always plums. As far as regular tomatoes are concerned, Anything that's not quite perfect then gets chopped or turned into passata. Fill up your four tins that are empty with water and it will look quite wet when you stir it in, but don't worry because that's gonna simmer now uh, on a gentle heat for about one and a half hours, two hours, and that will reduce down. The plum tomatoes will just naturally break up when you give it a little stir and you're gonna create the most wonderful, beautiful, robust ragu sauce. Remember, we've made twice as much as we need. So that's, you know, possibly another 10 meals. You can bag it up in the freezer for months. Just run it under a tap and plop it out of this bag into a pan and you can reheat it in minutes. Minutes, minutes, minutes. Brilliant little tips. Don't forget to label it. Squeeze the air out. The thinner it goes, the quicker it's gonna freeze and the quicker you can reheat it, okay? So we'll zip it up like that let it go to room temperature, and then actually put it in the freezer shelf just like that, okay? And then it'll go super hard, and then you can rack it up. Almost like a library of kind of edible books. Really good little tip. That is my classic, humble family ragu. My guys love it. 
I hope you love it. Uh, if you want the recipe, hit the link below. Somewhere down there, there'll be a recipe. Uh, also, guys, we've just launched a new channel, and that's the Family Food Tube channel. Hit the link now, hit the link, and go subscribe if you're a parent. And that channel is all about doing recipes and talking to parents and really trying to help them uh, make being a great parent and cooking beautiful fresh food easier and better. But guys, until next time, thank you very much. Bye. There we had um, a nice recipe for um, a bolognese ragu. So. You'll notice a lot of the food we've talked about today were in the um, recipe. Um, a nice simple recipe and it will taste really, really delicious. Add some pasta and you have a delicious meal. Okay, let's review everything that we've done today. Um, so first of all, we looked at our common foods, our onion, potatoes, milk and cheese and fish, those kinds of things. Then we talked about the different types of food that they are. So we've got our dairy, vegetables, fruit, our grains and our meat and protein. We then talked about one meal of the day, breakfast, lunch or dinner. And then you wrote some things about food and gave your extra information. And then at the end, hopefully, that made watching this um, video a lot easier because you could understand more of the vocabulary. Um, so, next week, we are going to be studying Unit 8, um, My Neighbourhood and Giving Directions. We're going to be looking at some common places we can find in the city. We'll be talking about our neighborhood, the place where we live. We'll be using preposition, prepositions of place to describe locations, things like across from or between or next to. And then we're going to be listening, listening and following some directions and also giving directions. So that's next week's class, everyone. So thank you for listening today, everyone. I hope you have um, a good week and I will see you next week. Bye.